Here it is. Struck him out. And for the first time since 1954, the Giants are world champions. Into right well hit. Back at the wall. And it's off the wall. One run scores. Here comes Berkman. Freeze has tied it. Unbelievable. In the air to right center. This game is tied. Going to third is Pools. And it's not. Freeze hits it in the air to center. We will see you tomorrow night. In the air to left, well hit. What a team. What a ride. The Cardinals are world champs in 2011. Zespinis hits one very high center field. Hamilton coming in. And he dropped it. He dropped it. One run scores. Two run score. And he's lead 7-5. That should do it. Under it now, makes the catch. Cruz about to the short. Escobar, and this could do it. And the Rays are in the postseason. David Price goes the distance. Play Super Shields. Broken back for Under. On the ground to the right side. The Texas Rangers went from being one of baseball's most prolific chokers to winning their first ever World Series title behind one of the game's best lineups and with just a few key arms in the starting rotation and bullpen. The team lost 102 games in 2021, but two years and nearly $400 million later, the Rangers were raising the franchise's first World Series title and expelling years of playoff failure. Here's how what was one of the worst teams in baseball over the past several seasons built the roster that managed to make it all the way to baseball's biggest stage. The Rangers prior to this season had one of baseball's most impressive legacies of failure, dating back to before this century. Let's take a quick look back at just their more recent playoff and regular season collapses, starting with the 2010 World Series, where the team lost in five games to the San Francisco Giants. This year was their first playoff berth since 1999, so you could almost view this run as a success despite failing to win their first World Series title. They would be back in the Fall Classic the following year, this time taking on a St. Louis Cardinals team that snuck into the playoffs on the final day of the season and upset a pair of good teams in the Phillies and Brewers on their way to an improbable World Series run. The Rangers found themselves with 3-2 lead in the series and were one strike away from winning it all in Game 6 twice. 
David Fries tied things in the ninth on a ball that Nelson Cruz will probably tell you he should have caught, but Texas took the lead back in extras on a Josh Hamilton home run. Once again, they would be one strike away from winning it all, but this time it would be Lance Berkman tying things again. David Fries would come up to bat in the 11th, and we all know how that game ended. The Rangers would put on an embarrassing display in Game 7 to become one of the very few teams to lose consecutive World Series. 2012 was the first season of baseball's new single elimination wildcard game, which added a fifth postseason spot. The Rangers lost the 2012 AL West title to the Oakland A's on the final day of the season in another embarrassing display, after blowing what was once a 13-game lead over them, including a five-game lead going into the final nine days of the season. They would go on to lose in the newly established wildcard game at home to the Baltimore Orioles. The 2013 Rangers lost in a Game 163 tiebreaker to the Tampa Bay Rays at home, a game that would decide the final AL wildcard spot coming off the heels of another division collapse down the stretch, notably due to a 2-12 stretch from August into September. 2014 was a more merciful year for fans of the team depending on how you look at it, as the Rangers played terrible all season long and finished last in the AL West with just 67 wins. They would be back in the postseason just a year later, winning the AL West and finding themselves with a two games to none lead in the division series against the Blue Jays, and were even heading home looking to close out the series. Toronto swept the two games in Texas, but even still the Rangers had a lead in the winner-take-all game five. What followed was one of the most incredible innings in baseball history, as well as one of the most embarrassing choke jobs we've ever seen. Elvis Andrews and the infield had four different defensive gaffes that led to Jose Bautista's epic home run for the lead, and Toronto came back from an 0-2 series deficit to win the series. One year and one right hook later, the Rangers found themselves in an 0-2 hole in the division series once again to the Blue Jays, who took advantage of more defensive mistakes by Texas to walk things off and sweep the series, ending the Rangers' season for the second consecutive year. The years that followed were a series of teams that wouldn't finish with more than 78 wins, with Texas losing 102 games in the 2021 season. They headed into yet another offseason with major questions, though there were certainly a few free agents that could jumpstart a rebuild in which the franchise had already hit rock bottom of. The Texas Rangers lost 102 games in 2021 and went into the offseason with a roster full of question marks. The team traded their franchise player and Joey Gallo at the trade deadline, along with their best starting pitcher and reliever and Kyle Gibson and Ian Kennedy. First baseman Nathaniel Lowe and rookie outfielder Adelise Garcia were the only bright spots remaining in the lineup, and the entire rotation needed to be reconstructed after the team finished with a 5.33 starting pitcher ERA, 28th in baseball. They were dead last in baseball with a 669 team OPS. The team was showing no improvement since missing the playoffs in 2017 and knew that there were major decisions to make in the upcoming off-seasons, ones that would come with major price points. Three days and $500 million later, the Rangers had brought in their new middle infield for at least the next seven years, signing superstar shortstop Corey Seager to a 10-year, $325 million contract and MVP finalist Marcus Simeon to a seven-year, $175 million deal to play second base. The financial decision to sign a pair of star players to a team with nearly zero core came with risks and concerns. For a 100 loss team to spend that much money on two players meant that they better not stop there. The Rangers had no intention of stopping there. Shortly before signing Seager, they gave starting pitcher John Gray a four-year $56 million deal to join the rotation. They brought back veteran Martin Perez, traded for slugging catcher Mitch Garver, and went into the 2022 season with a pair of new franchise players in hopes of improvement. The team improved by 8 games from their 2021 total, winning 68 games during the season and finishing 4th in the division. First baseman Nathaniel Lowe had another stellar offensive season, Adolis Garcia put up strong power numbers once again, and Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon struggled at times during their first year in Texas, but still finished as above average offensive players. Martin Perez turned in a stellar season in the rotation, and John Gray was good for 24 starts and a 3.96 ERA. The team didn't do much at the trade deadline, but in August, they fired their president of baseball operations, John Daniels, who had been with the team for 17 years, building the 2010 and 2011 pennant winning teams. General manager Chris Young would take over the position as the Rangers finished the season at 68 wins and were headed towards another pivotal offseason in their rebuild. The team sought once again to improve a rotation that finished 25th in the league in ERA, and there were several high-profile arms available on the market. 
Their first order of business was to hire Bruce Bochy as the team's new manager, who had recently led the San Francisco Giants to three World Series titles, including the 2010 team that beat the Rangers in the World Series. Bochy hadn't managed since 2019, but the organization sought experience at the managerial position after a streak of managers with minimal previous experience. After signing Bochy to a three-year deal, they exercised their team option on reliever Jose Leclerc, traded for starter Jake Odorizzi, and brought back starter Martin Perez on the qualifying offer. Next came major upgrades to the rotation, as generational talent and multiple Cy Young winner Jacob deGrom was brought to Texas on a massive five-year, $185 million deal. With his injury history playing a major factor in the Mets' reluctance to sign him to a longer-term deal, the Rangers were paying a massive price on a pitcher that could potentially be worth every penny. Just a few days later, the team announced the signing of Andrew Heaney to a two-year deal, who was coming off a strong bounce-back year with the Dodgers. The final big rotation prize was right-hander Nate Eovaldi, who was coming off an injury plague season but was an all-star in 2021. Eovaldi was signed to a two-year, $34 million deal with an option for 2025, and the Rangers rotation now consisted of DeGrom, Eovaldi, Heaney, John Gray, Martin Perez, Dane Dunning, and Jake Odorizzi. One trade and $264 million in new contracts later, and Texas had completely rebuilt one of the worst rotations in baseball. They signed Robbie Grossman just before spring training, gave the third base job to top prospect Josh Young, and were ready to build on what was a potentially league-crushing offense. The depth of the starting rotation was tested early, with Jake Odorizzi going down with a season-ending shoulder injury in spring training, but the past two off-seasons of spending had left Texas with strong depth. Opening day arrived, and with it came the much-anticipated debut of Jacob deGrom. A deGrom Aaron Nola matchup was a pitching duel on paper, but deGrom allowed five runs in less than four innings to begin his Rangers career. One inning later, Texas had put up nine runs in the fourth inning and now led 9 to 5, and would win on opening day 11 to 7. They bludgeoned the Phillies again the next game with 16 runs, setting the standard for the offense at the beginning of the season. The team continued to crush their way through April, scoring 178 runs in their first 28 games and finishing the month at 17-11, first in the AL West. Their team run total was second to only the Rays, who opened with a 23-6 record. They weren't at the absolute top of the league in many offensive categories, but one stat that stuck out was their hard hit rate. When the Rangers hit the ball, they hit it hard, leading to more runs and a run differential of plus 72, by far the best in the league. The lineup was firing on all cylinders, led by Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, Adolis Garcia, Jonah Heim, and Josh Young. Garcia drove in 30 runs during the month and crushed 8 home runs. Young was off to a great start to his rookie campaign, and Jonah Heim was quickly proving to be an offensive weapon behind the plate to go along with his already great defense. Simeon was off to a hot start, and Seager was hitting like his superstar form before going down with a hamstring injury. The strength in the Rangers lineup was the depth, and with Seager going down, players like Travis Jankowski, Ezekiel Duran, and Robbie Grossman were contributing offensively. Things were moving along the best they had in years for the Rangers. That is, until Jacob deGrom started to experience issues with his throwing elbow and was forced to leave starts early as a precaution. He was placed on the 15-day injured list with elbow inflammation after exiting a start early on April 28th, but the move was initially viewed more as a move of caution to let deGrom rest for re-evaluation over the coming days. But there was still concern long-term for DeGrom, who had not pitched a full season since winning his second straight Cy Young Award in 2019. The Rangers continued to pummel their way to victories throughout the month of May, ending with a 35-20 record and still standing atop the AL West. They were first in baseball in runs scored and team batting average, and now had a run differential of plus 131. The next closest team was the Atlanta Braves at plus 58. When the Rangers won games, they did it by absolutely crushing their opponent offensively. The pitching was also getting it done for Texas, and they ranked 6th in MLB and Team ERA at the conclusion of May. With the absence of DeGrom, Dane Dunning had stepped up to make starts after beginning the season in the bullpen, pitching to a 2.06 ERA. Nate Eovaldi was leading the rotation with a stellar start to his season, pitching to a 2.42 ERA in 11 starts. John Gray had also been fantastic to start the year, and Andrew Heaney had been solid in his first season with the Rangers. Texas was winning thanks to their absurd lineup and strong starting pitching core, which helped to lessen the blow of the occasional bullpen meltdown that plagued them in several games so far. But there was certainly more adversity headed their way.
The depth of the Rangers rotation had already been tested early in the year, with the team losing Jake Odorizzi before the season began and then losing Jacob deGrom six starts into the year. The deGrom situation would quickly turn disastrous, as it was announced on June 6th that he would undergo season-ending Tommy John surgery, the second of his career. An emotional deGrom shared his disappointment in not being able to help the team win in 2023, and the career of what was baseball's most dominant pitcher was once again in jeopardy. The loss of Texas's massive investment in their rotation ace put a huge blow in their fans' hopes for a deep postseason run. The team would have to look elsewhere to fill out the top of the rotation led by Nate Eovaldi. Following the DeGrom injury, the Rangers began to experience their first rough stretch of the season, going 10-13 and 13 in games following the news to the end of June. The lineup, which had been bludgeoning opponents to death, began to experience regression when it came to hitting with runners in scoring position. They dropped a series against the AL Best Tampa Bay Rays, lost 3-4 to the Los Angeles Angels, and dropped a pair of close games to lose a series to the New York Yankees near the end of the month. Jonah Heim was called for a ridiculous catcher's violation against the White Sox, which led to the eventual game-winning run scoring and a Rangers loss. They lost a game against the Lowly Tigers, going 0 for 10 with runners in scoring position. Despite the slight slide by the team during June, they still went 14 and 13 during the month, which led to them still holding the top spot in the AL West and the second best record in the American League at 49 and 33. The lineup, despite the regression, was still deep as ever, with Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, Adolis Garcia, Josh Young, and Jonah Heim continuing to put up all-star caliber seasons. Garcia ended the month with 66 runs batted in on the season in 81 games, and Seager had driven in 48 runs and was hitting 345 despite missing time due to injury and only playing in 50 games so far. Ezekiel Duran and Travis Jankowski continued to lengthen out the lineup, along with strong showings from Leody Tavares and Nathaniel Lowe. Nate Eovaldi, John Gray, and Dane Dunning continued to be strong points in the rotation, and Josh Spores, Brock Burke, and Will Smith had emerged as reliable arms in the bullpen. The Rangers could afford to have an average month record-wise thanks to the hot start they had gotten off to, and they made a move to shore up their bullpen on the last day of the month, acquiring a rejuvenated Araldus Chapman from the Kansas City Royals. Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, Josh Young, and Jonah Heim were all named to the American League All-Star starting lineup at the end of June. Prior to the announcement, it had been over 10 years since the Rangers had an All-Star starter, their first since Josh Hamilton, Adrian Beltre, and Mike Napoli started for the AL in 2012. A week later in July, the team would gain a fifth as Adolis Garcia joined the starting lineup, marking the first time in 47 years that one team had five position players to start in the All-Star game. Starting pitcher Nate Eovaldi would be named to the roster as a reserve, giving the Rangers six total All-Stars in Seattle. Texas limped into the All-Star break after several bullpen meltdowns, but still maintained a 52-39 record and a two-game lead in the West over the Houston Astros. Coming out of the break, the Rangers won six straight games, including a three-game sweep of the Tampa Bay Rays, who owned the best record in the American League. They lost a series to the Dodgers before traveling to Houston and losing the series opener in heartbreaking fashion, with the Raldis Chapman coughing up a three-run home run in the seventh to tie things up before the Astros walked it off in the ninth. Houston took the second game of the series before the bats of the Rangers came alive in the series finale, capped off by an Adolis Garcia grand slam to break things open in the fifth. Tensions rose due to hit batters on both sides earlier in the game, benches cleared, and the battle for the AL West got turned up a notch in the Rangers' blowout victory. Texas traveled to San Diego and the bats went silent again as they were swept in three games by the Padres. The trade deadline was approaching and the Rangers had a need for starters that they felt comfortable handing the ball to in the playoffs, as well as the obvious need for more reliable bullpen arms. On July 29th, reports came out that the Mets and Rangers had agreed on a deal to send Hall of Famer Max Scherzer to Texas, pending Scherzer's approval due to his no-trade clause. The Mets, in the midst of one of their most disappointing seasons in franchise history, had already moved on from their closer and now were shopping their pair of $40 million aces in Scherzer and Justin Verlander. Several hours later, the financial details were worked out and the deal became official. Max Scherzer was sent to Texas in exchange for top infield prospect in Luis Angel Acuna. The Mets committed to paying a significant amount of Scherzer's contract in order to get a better prospect return, and the Rangers waited until Scherzer opted into his 2024 player option before making the move, in order to justify sending a top prospect for the 39-year-old starter making $43 million. The Rangers traded a potential high-end talent to save money, and they now had one of baseball's best pitchers of this era for their postseason run, even if he wasn't quite the pitcher he once was. 
Texas wasn't done, as just a day later they had swung a deal with another disappointing team in the St. Louis Cardinals to acquire starting pitcher Jordan Montgomery and reliever Chris Stratton. Montgomery had been one of baseball's most reliable starters over the past few seasons and gave them another strong option for a potential postseason rotation, while Stratton would hopefully give them more options in their struggling bullpen. Their deadline was done, with the Hall being two strong postseason starters and a bullpen reinforcement. The Rangers finished with an 11-13 record in July, putting them at 60-46 and 46 on the season and just a half game ahead of the Houston Astros in the AL West. Speaking of the Astros, they made a deal on August 1st to get the other Mets ace that was available, reuniting with Justin Verlander after he had won the Cy Young and departed in free agency the previous winter. The move put Scherzer and Verlander right in the thick of the AL West race, former teammates now on opposite sides once again vying for the division. While the offense wasn't performing at quite the level it was at the beginning of the season, the bigger issues were in the rotation and bullpen. Things started to slide due to injuries, as Nate Eovaldi was placed on the injured list just after the Scherzer deal with a forearm strain, leaving Texas without their most reliable starter for the next month. Corey Seager missed time due to a strained thumb. The team would be without Jonah Heim for several weeks with a wrist injury. Despite these injuries, Texas reeled off eight straight wins to begin August, with Scherzer making his debut and pitching six quality innings and Jordan Montgomery put in a strong debut to win the next night. Injuries would strike again a few days later, when Josh Young was forced to leave a game and miss six weeks with a broken left thumb after taking a 109 miles per hour line drive off of it during a game against the Marlins. Just a week later, the bats started to go quiet again and the bullpen issues pushed their way to the forefront. Will Smith blew a game against the Giants in extras. Josh Spores served up a three-run homer to cap off a comeback for the Brewers. Aroldis Chapman and Will Smith blew several Texas leads to the Diamondbacks late to lose yet another winnable game. The Twins were able to pull off a three-run eighth inning comeback thanks to another blown save by Spores, then a few nights later the Rangers blew two more saves in another Twins extra inning comeback. Jose Leclerc and Chapman were unable to close out the Mets in the final game of August, as they too managed to come back late to spoil a series sweep by the Rangers. Texas had a bullpen problem, with five blown saves in July and eight in August. They were tied for first in baseball with 26 blown saves on the season. With minimal bullpen moves at the deadline, they looked for internal answers to help get them back on top of the division, where they now sat in third place with a 75 and 58 record, one game behind the Astros and the Seattle Mariners, who won a franchise record 21 games in August to put themselves right back into the division race. The Rangers started the final month of the regular season off with yet another extra inning bullpen collapse against the Twins, but managed to salvage the final game of the series to avoid a sweep thanks to an Adolis Garcia walk-off home run. They then welcomed in the Astros for the final regular season matchup against the two teams, looking to reclaim their lead in the AL West. They proceeded to get absolutely trounced in all three games, getting outscored by a total of 39-10. The Astros scored double-digit runs in every game and knocked around Nate Eovaldi in his return from the injured list. Following the sweep, they fell to three games out of the division and in third place behind Houston and Seattle. The bad news kept coming for Texas, who placed Adolis Garcia on the injured list following the series sweep. Looking for a spark, they promoted one of their top prospects in Evan Carter, who was having a strong year offensively in the minors. They won a series against Oakland, then traveled to Toronto for a four-game set against another playoff hopeful team. They won the series opener, but injuries would strike the team hard again in the second game. Max Scherzer was forced to leave in the sixth inning due to tricep spasms and was placed on the injured list the next day with a strained Terrace major muscle. It was said initially that Scherzer was likely done for the season, even if the Rangers were to make a deep playoff run. Despite all of the knocks that the Rangers were taking, they were able to ignite the bats and sweep the four-game series from the Blue Jays in Toronto, planting themselves back into the race for the division and the playoffs. But all momentum would come to a screeching halt, as the team was promptly swept in three games at the hands of the Cleveland Guardians, and once again the future of the season was hanging in the balance. They were hanging on to a wildcard spot, but were still just one and a half games back of the division with 13 games left to play, which included six games with the Seattle Mariners. Reinforcements were coming, as Josh Young and Dolis Garcia were activated from the injury list. The Rangers took two of three from the Red Sox, but blew another late game lead in the first game of the series to only win two of three. Following another blown save on September 18th, the Rangers were 3 for 16 in save chances since August 13th. They then welcomed the Mariners in for a three-game set and yet another pivotal series for their playoff and division hopes. Coming into the series, the Astros held a half-game lead over both Seattle and Texas for the AL West. The Rangers answered the call, 
the offense stepped up and scored enough runs to beat the Texas bullpen. Jordan Montgomery turned in another clutch performance, and the Rangers swept the Mariners to regain their lead in the division, which was now up to two and a half games over Houston thanks to their sweep at the hands of the Royals. The Rangers then took two of three from the Angels and still held their two and a half game lead in the division. With four games remaining, there were four teams vying for three playoff spots. The winner of the AL West would get a first round bye, leaving the other three teams fighting for the final two wildcard spots. The Rangers' final four games would be against the Mariners in Seattle, with a 99.2% chance of making the playoffs and a 91.6% chance of winning the division. But of course, the games need to be played. The Rangers would lose the opener in a heartbreaking but familiar fashion, as the Mariners rallied for two runs in the bottom of the ninth against the bullpen to come back and beat Texas, saving their season and keeping the Rangers' playoff clinch on ice. The next night, Nate Eovaldi would get crushed by Seattle to keep the suspense going, and Houston won their first game of their final series against Arizona. On the final day of September, Andrew Heaney in the bullpen would throw nine innings with only one run allowed to secure a win and a postseason berth for the Texas Rangers, their first since 2016. The win would eliminate Seattle from postseason contention, but in Arizona, the Astros took care of business by winning 1-0 putting themselves just one game behind Texas for the division heading into the final day of the season. With the new tiebreaker rules and postseason format, there would no longer be a game 163 tiebreaker for the division crown. Instead, head-to-head -head record would be used to break any ties between teams, and thanks to the Astros' three-game sweep of the Rangers in September, they currently own the tiebreaker. But with the lead in the division, all the Rangers needed to do was beat the Mariners one more time, or hope that Arizona could salvage the final game of their series against the Astros. There would be no major suspense on the final day of the regular season, as the Rangers bats failed to show up against George Kirby and the Mariners, as they dropped the final game of the regular season 1-0. In Arizona, the Astros polished off an 8-1 win over the Diamondbacks, concluding a series sweep and another AL West division title. The Rangers, who came into the day looking at a first round bye, now had to travel to Tampa Bay to play in the wildcard series. On the final day of the season, the Rangers and Astros would finish with the exact same record, but the momentum was headed in entirely different directions. Alex Bregman was quoted just before the celebration of the AL West crown. People were wondering what it was going to be like if the Strohs didn't win the division. I guess we'll never know. Just two days after missing out on a first round postseason bye, the Rangers traveled to Tampa Bay to take on one of the top teams in the league in the Rays, who were at the top of the Rangers in most offensive categories in the American League. Texas would send Jordan Montgomery to the mound against the Rays' Tyler Glasnow. The Rangers would take an early lead in the second on a sacrifice fly from Josh Young and would add another thanks to some wildness from Glasnow to take a 2-0 lead. Glasnow would walk five batters on the day, while Montgomery would work his way through five scoreless innings before the Rangers doubled their lead in the sixth thanks to a costly error by Jose Siri. Montgomery would finish with seven scoreless innings, and Aroldis Chapman and Jose Leclerc would add scoreless appearances to finish off a Game 1 Rangers victory. Nate Eovaldi would head to the mound in Game 2 and would throw six and two-thirds strong, only allowing one run while striking out eight. What was a mashing Rays offense during the regular season only mustered one run in two games against the Rangers, whose offense came alive in Game 2 thanks to home runs from Adolis Garcia and Evan Carter, and big hits from Josh Young, Marcus Simeon, and Corey Seager. The Rangers would finish off a postseason series win, knocking off one of the best teams in the American League in convincing fashion. The concerning bullpen didn't come into play, and Texas would now travel to Baltimore to take on another top team in the league. The Rangers, running short on starters, would send Andrew Heaney to the mound in Game 1 against a young but tough Orioles lineup. Evan Carter would open the scoring in the fourth inning against Kyle Bradish with an RBI double, and Jonah Heim would bring him home to give Texas the 2-0 lead. Ryan Mountcastle got a run back in the bottom half of the inning against Heaney, who would be replaced by Dane Dunning. Josh Young extended the league in the sixth with a solo shot, but Anthony Santander would get the run right back in the bottom half of the frame with a home run of his own off of Dunning. The Rangers then turned to Will Smith, Josh Spores, Aroldis Chapman, and Jose Leclerc for the rest of the way. Chapman would bend but not break in the eighth, getting a key double play and strikeout to preserve the lead. Leclerc would close things out with some help from Jonah Heim, who threw out Gunnar Henderson trying to steal second to keep the tying run off base. The Rangers had stolen game one, and once again the bullpen came up big to seal the win. Montgomery would return for game two in Baltimore, and was much less sharp this time around than he was in Tampa Bay. The Orioles put up an early 2-0 lead before the Rangers answered back on run-scoring hits by Leody Tavares, Mitch Garver, Adolis Garcia, and Jonah Heim to knock out Grayson Rodriguez and jump out to a 5-2 lead with 5 runs in the second. 
An inning later, Mitch Garvin would nearly put the game to bed with a postseason grand slam, extending the lead to 9-2 and putting the pressure on the Orioles to avoid going down 0-2 heading back to Texas. The bullpen would once again bend but not break to secure a win, but did show some major cracks as the Orioles rally was cut short in the Rangers 11-8 win. Game 3 would turn the series back to Texas, and Eovaldi would take the mound looking to sweep the number one seed in the AL. Corey Seager would start things early with a home run off of Dean Kramer, and Mitch Garver would come up clutch again with a two-run double to make it 3-0 Texas. Next up came Adolis Garcia, who crushed a dramatic three-run home run to double the Rangers' lead and put the Orioles' season to bed, as the Rangers put up yet another five-run inning to make things 6-0. Eovaldi would dominate with seven strong innings, and the combination of Chapman and Leclerc would send the Rangers back to the ALCS for the first time since 2011. The Rangers, coming off another division collapse, went on the road and beat two of the best teams in the American League, thanks to their relentless offense and strong performances from Eovaldi and Montgomery. They now would head to Houston for the start of the All-Texas ALCS, with a trip to the World Series on the line. The American League title would run through Texas as the Rangers and Astros prepared to square off once again. Houston was in their 7th straight ALCS while the Rangers were just making it back. The last few times these teams met were full of emotion and dramatic moments, whether it was the benches clearing or Houston sweeping the Rangers in Arlington. The Rangers went out and brought in Max Scherzer at the deadline and the Astros responded by bringing in Justin Verlander. A series of storylines and excitement was on deck and it sure did deliver. The Rangers sent Jordan Montgomery to the mound in Game 1 in Houston, while the Astros countered with Verlander. Texas would take the early lead on a Jonah Heim single, and Montgomery was able to navigate through a tough Houston lineup, including multiple strikeouts of the red-hot Jordan Alvarez. Leody Tavares took Verlander deep from the number 9 spot in the lineup in the 5th inning to give the Rangers a 2-0 lead. Montgomery would work into the 7th before giving way to Josh Spores. Aroldis Chapman entered in the 8th, and with Jose Altuve on 1st, Alex Bregman hit a ball to deep left center, where Evan Carter made an incredible catch and managed to throw it back into the infield, where they doubled up Jose Altuve due to him not retouching 2nd base on his way back to 1st. Jose Leclerc worked a 1-2-3 ninth to secure a massive Texas win in Game 1, setting them up with Nate Eovaldi in Game 2. All postseason, the Rangers had made a habit of scoring early in bunches, and they did just that against Framber Valdez and the Astros in Game 2. Texas scored 4 runs in the first inning, aided by a Valdez error and 5 singles, and things were quickly turning dire for Houston. The inevitable Jordan Alvarez home run occurred in the bottom of the second off of Eovaldi, getting the Astros on the board, but Jonah Heim added a home run of his own in the very next inning to make things 5-1. Eovaldi would work 6 innings, allowing 2 more runs and exiting with a 5-3 lead. Not his sharpest outing, but the Rangers were still very much in control of the game. Josh Spores worked a scoreless 7th, and Aroldis Chapman entered in the 8th and gave up yet another home run to none other than Jordan Alvarez, his 6th home run in 6 games this postseason, which cut the lead to just one run. Jose Leclerc would work out of a jam in the 8th before working another perfect ninth inning to secure another massive win for Texas on the road, who now owned a 2-0 lead heading back to Arlington. Prior to the ALCS, news began circulating that Max Scherzer could potentially make his return during the series after previously having the rest of his season in question. That's exactly who the Rangers turned to in Game 3, but the Astros tagged the future Hall of Famer for 5 runs across 4 innings. Josh Young made things a little closer with a 2-run home run, Leody Tavares robbed another Jordan Alvarez home run, but the Astros kept scoring off of the Rangers' bullpen, which was forced to enter early and cover innings for Scherzer. Young added another home run later in the game, and Adolis Garcia drove in a run in the 8th to make things 8-5 Houston, but the Astros held on and were able to avoid being sent down 3-0 in the series. Struggling to find starters, the Rangers sent Andrew Heaney to the mound in Game 4, who was unable to make it out of the first inning, allowing three runs before giving way to Dane Dunning. Adolis Garcia crushed another home run, and Josh Young knocked in Mitch Garver to make it a one-run game in the second, and Corey Seager tied things up in the third with a home run of his own off of Jose Urquidy. But the Astros offense would then go to work against the Rangers bullpen, who again was forced to enter the game early. Houston would go on to score seven unanswered runs, including a four spot in the fourth inning to give them a commanding 10-3 lead. The Astros would close things down and tie up the series 2-2, a series in which the home team had yet to win a game. Game 5 was certainly a pivotal one for both teams, which would be a rematch with the Montgomery-Verlander matchup from Game 1. Alex Bregman started the scoring in the first with a home run off of Montgomery, but the scoring would stay there until the fifth inning when Nathaniel Lowe tied things up with an opposite field home run off of Verlander. 
The Astros would take the lead back in the sixth on a hot shot by Jose Abreu that Corey Seager couldn't corral, making it a 2-1 Houston lead. Verlander would head back out for the sixth inning, and after allowing a double to Corey Seager and a single to Evan Carter, stayed in to face Adolis Garcia, who delivered the most dramatic home run of the postseason so far, launching a go-ahead three-run shot to give Texas a 4-2 lead and completely change the momentum of the game. The Rangers would hold the lead through the eighth, with Leclerc working out of another jam, but in the bottom half, the Texas-Houston rivalry would come to the forefront once again. With a runner on first, Brian Abreu hit Adolis Garcia in his at-bat following the home run, leading to the benches clearing and multiple ejections, including Abreu, Garcia, and Astros manager Dusty Baker. The Astros would escape without giving up another run, but Leclerc would return for the ninth inning, having sat a long period of time since pitching in the eighth due to the delay. After giving up a leadoff single and walking the number 9 hitter, Jose Altuve would come up representing the go-ahead run. If Adolis Garcia hit the most dramatic home run of the postseason earlier in this game, Altuve managed to top that with a go-ahead 3-run home run off of Leclerc, flipping the series on its head. Aside from games where they had to enter early, the Rangers' bullpen had held up all postseason until this moment. The Rangers put two runners on to lead off their half of the ninth, but after a sharp line drive off the bat of Marcus Simeon, a long flyout by Corey Seager, and a strikeout of Evan Carter, the Astros had swept the three games in Arlington and now were headed back home with a 3-2 series lead, and they had all of the momentum. In the words of catcher Martin Maldonado, the worst thing Adelise Garcia did was wake up the Houston Astros. The Rangers would once again hand the ball to Nathan Eovaldi in a win or go home game 6 in Houston, and Jordan Alvarez would get the Astros on the board early in the first, continuing his streak of dominance against Eovaldi over the years. Then the Rangers offense went to work. Mitch Garver tied things up with a home run off of Framber Valdez, and then Jonah Heim hit a go ahead 2 run shot to the opposite field to give the Rangers a 3-1 lead. The Astros got a run closer in the 6th on a sacrifice fly, but Eovaldi pitched his way into the 7th inning, giving up just 2 runs. Mitch Garver extended the lead with an RBI double in the 8th before the floodgates opened in the 9th. Ryan Stanek hit Corey Seager with the bases loaded to bring in the 5th Rangers run before Adolis Garcia removed any remaining suspense surrounding the outcome of the game with a rocket grand slam to the Crawford boxes, continuing his absolute tear in the series. The Rangers survived Game 6 in Houston with a 9-2 victory and were headed to a winner-take-all Game 7 tomorrow night. Max Scherzer would take the mound in another do-or-die game for the Rangers, and he would be spotted three quick runs before throwing a pitch. Corey Seeker started things off with a solo shot off of Christian Javier, and Adolis Garcia and Mitch Garver singled in a pair of runs to make it 3-0 Texas in the first. The Astros scratched across a run in the first, before Adolis Garcia made his presence known again with another home run in the third to make it 4-1 Rangers. An Alex Bregman home run and a Jordan Alvarez triple would get a run back for the Astros, and Bruce Bochy decided in the bottom of the third to end Scherzer's night and hand the ball to Jordan Montgomery, working out of the bullpen in Game 7. Montgomery escaped without further damage, and the Rangers' offense went to work in the top of the fourth, with a two-run double by Evan Carter and another key hit by Adolis Garcia extending the lead to 8-2 against the Astros' ailing pitching staff. Montgomery worked two more scoreless innings, before Nathaniel Lowe gave the Rangers double-digit runs with a two-run homer in the sixth, and the doors were closing fast on the Astros' season. Josh Spores and Araldus Chapman got the Rangers through the 7th, and Adolis Garcia came up again in the 8th to further cement his ALCS MVP performance with another home run, making it 11-3 Texas. Jose Leclerc would look to finish things off in the 9th, but not before Jose Altuve greeted him with another home run. But this one would be far less significant than the one in Game 5, and Leclerc sealed the Rangers' trip to the World Series with a Kyle Tucker groundout, and the Rangers were headed back to the Fall Classic for the first time since 2011. Adolis Garcia was named MVP, and this strange All-Texas ALCS ended with the home team losing every single game in the series. The Rangers, despite all the punches they took leading up to this point, were headed to baseball's biggest stage. The 119th World Series would pit the Texas Rangers against the Arizona Diamondbacks, who won just 84 games during the regular season, but swept the Brewers and Dodgers in the first round of the playoffs, before upsetting a heavily favored and reigning NL champion Philadelphia Phillies team in seven games in the NLCS. The fifth-seeded Rangers would take on the sixth-seeded Diamondbacks in a matchup that nobody saw coming at the beginning of the postseason, much less at the beginning of the year. The Rangers would turn to Nate Eovaldi to start Game 1, who came out strong with a scoreless first inning. The Rangers offense, as it so often does, scored early with two runs in the first inning on an Evan Carter double and an Adolis Garcia single off of Arizona's ace, Zach Gallen, who was having a very rough postseason. 
Eovaldi would punch out the side in the second before Arizona's top hitters in Corbin Carroll and Cattell Marte would turn things around. Carroll lined a game-tying, two-run triple that Leody Tavares could not cut off, and Cattell Marte brought him home on a grounder to first that forced Carroll to make a perfect slide to make it 3-2 Arizona. Gallon would struggle in the bottom of the third, in a bases-loaded walk to Mitch Garver would knot things at three, before Tommy Pham crushed a solo shot to left field to get the lead back for Arizona. Eovaldi would fail to complete five innings, surrendering another run on a Cattell Marte double before departing and handing the ball to Dane Dunning. The 5-3 score would hold all the way to the ninth inning, thanks to strong performances from Arizona's dominant bullpen and the Rangers' depth doing their part, notably starter John Gray on in relief. Paul Seawald entered to close things out for the Diamondbacks, but Leody Tavares would work a leadoff walk from the ninth spot to bring the tying run to the plate. Corey Seager would come to the plate with one out and a chance to tie things up, and on the very first pitch from Seawald, he hit a fastball running up in the zone 418 feet to tie things up at five, lending out a motion that echoed every Rangers fan in the building. Seawald would escape the inning by striking out Austin Hedges, and the score would hold to the bottom of the 11th, when Adolis Garcia came up with a chance to send everyone home. Fresh off of his ALCS MVP performance, he did just that walking things off with an opposite field home run, giving the Rangers a dramatic 6-5 come from behind victory. In one of the greatest World Series game ones that we've seen, the Rangers pulled off an incredible come from behind victory thanks to a pair of their superstars. Game 2 saw Merrill Kelly come out and dominate this slugging Texas lineup, while the Diamondbacks continued their offensive onslaught by hitting around Jordan Montgomery for 4 runs in 6 innings and tagging Martin Perez for 4 more when he came on in relief. Arizona, dubbed the Answerbacks, even up the series with the dominant 9-1 victory in Game 2, in which the only Texas run came on a Mitch Garver solo shot in the fifth. The series would head to Arizona, with both teams looking to take the advantage in the series. Max Scherzer would return to the mound in a pivotal Game 3, and delivered his best outing of the postseason with three scoreless innings, before he was forced to depart with an injury that would take him off of the roster and end his season. The half a billion boys would contribute to another multi-run inning for Texas, as a struggling Marcus Simeon brought home the first run of the game before Corey Seager hit another huge home run to give the Rangers a 3-0 lead. John Gray and Josh Spores would complete four scoreless innings out of the bullpen following Scherzer's three before the Diamondbacks broke through with a run in the eighth off of Veraldis Chapman. The Rangers and Chapman would escape thanks to a great double play started by none other than Corey Seager, retiring the red-hot Cattell Marte to end the threat. Jose Leclerc would punch out a pair in a scoreless ninth, giving the Rangers a 2-1 series advantage. Despite having the lead in the series, they would be faced with two serious injuries, one to Scherzer and the other to ALCS MVP Adolis Garcia, who was forced to leave the game in the 8th inning after flying out due to an oblique injury. They would lose both players for the rest of the series. The name of the game for the Rangers offense all postseason long had been early crooked numbers, and they did just that against the Diamondbacks on their bullpen day. After a run scored in the second on a wild pitch, Marcus Simeon brought in two more with a two-run triple to quickly make it 3-0 Rangers. Next up, who else but Corey Seager, who crushed another two-run shot to make it 5-0 Rangers in a five-run second inning. Texas might have been done in the second, but they put up five more runs in the third thanks to a Travis Jankowski double that Alec Thomas couldn't corral, and another massive hit from Marcus Simeon, who hit a three-run homer for his first home run of the postseason and a 10-0 Texas lead. Andrew Heaney would turn in five innings for the Rangers, only giving up one run. The Rangers added another in the eighth on a Jonah Heim solo shot, but the Diamondbacks showed that they were called the answer backs for a reason. They scored six runs across the final two innings, fueled by a Lourdes Gurriel home run and a Gabriel Moreno single, but Jose Leclerc was able to stop the rally short and give Texas a commanding three games to one lead in the series. The Rangers sent big game Nathan Eovaldi to the mound in Game 5 with a chance to win their first World Series in franchise history, who was matched up with a struggling Zach Gallen for Arizona. This game would be the best pitcher's duel of the postseason, with Eovaldi and Gallen each throwing six scoreless innings. Eovaldi worked around five walks to strike out five in his six scoreless, while Gallen held the Rangers hitless entering the seventh inning. Corey Seager led off the inning with a single and moved to third on an Evan Carter double to set up the biggest Rangers scoring threat of the night so far. Gallen surrendered the go-ahead single to Mitch Garver on the next plate appearance before he and Kevin Ginkle were able to hold the Rangers right there thanks to a strikeout and a play at home to keep the lead to just one run. Aroldis Chapman would enter in the seventh and record two outs before giving way to Josh Spores, 
who finished off the inning and worked a scoreless eighth, putting the Rangers just three outs away from the promised land. Texas wasn't done scoring, however, as a Jonaheim single that went under the glove of Alec Thomas and all the way to the wall brought in two and another Marcus Simeon home run would put on the finishing touches for the offense, stretching the lead to 5-0 and giving the bullpen more breathing room than they had in 2011. Josh Spores, who didn't make the opening day roster for the Rangers, retired the first two batters he faced, got Cattell Marte down 1-2 and two in the count to put the Rangers a strike away, and finished him off with a 2-2 curveball at the top of the zone that froze Arizona's hottest hitter, who was in the midst of a 20-game postseason hitting streak, ending years of suffering and anguish for Rangers fans everywhere. The Texas Rangers were world champions, and the crushing World Series defeat of 2011 was no longer hanging over their heads, and the celebration in Arizona and around the country ensued, with the song Higher by Creed blasting in the background of the clubhouse. The Rangers pulled off one of the quickest turnarounds of a franchise that we've seen in recent memory. From losing over 100 games in 2021 to a World Series title in 2023, a ton of credit needs to be given to the front office for the willingness to make aggressive trades, under the radar moves, and the ability to develop the offensive talent that built the fearsome lineup that Texas featured. They led the American League in runs scored, hits, home runs, batting average, and OPS. Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon turned in incredible seasons, finishing second and third in the MVP voting. Seager was named World Series MVP for the second time in his career. Simeon won the MLB PAA Heart and Hustle Award, playing in all 162 games of the regular season and all 17 postseason games. Josh Young finished fourth in the Rookie of the Year voting. Adolis Garcia crushed 39 home runs and drove in 107. Evan Carter came up in September and hit like an established star, both in the final month of the season and all throughout the playoffs. Jonah Heim turned in an all-star season on both sides of the ball behind the plate. Nathaniel Lowe remained a steady power presence in the lineup, and bonus pieces like Ezekiel Duran, Leody Tavares, Mitch Garver, Travis Jankowski, and Robbie Grossman helped lengthen the best lineup in the American League. The pitching staff bent but didn't break thanks to moves by the front office, both in acquiring players in the offseason and at the trade deadline. Nate Eovaldi led the staff all season and throughout October, Jordan Montgomery turned himself into a postseason legend in Texas, and the combination of Andrew Heaney, Dane Dunning, and John Gray helped to cover innings and bring home a World Series to Texas. Dunning, one of the longest tenured members of the staff, led the Rangers in innings pitched during the regular season. Jose Leclerc and Josh Spores stepped up in October to help stabilize a bullpen that everyone was sure would hold the Rangers back from doing anything meaningful in October. The off-seasons of spending helped build the Rangers up to what they were this season, starting with the signings of Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon. They built the rotation back up by bringing in Jacob deGrom, Nate Eovaldi, Andrew Heaney, John Gray, and then Max Scherzer and Jordan Montgomery at the trade deadline. They made smart trades before the 2021 and 2020 seasons to net themselves Dane Dunning, Adolis Garcia, Jonah Heim, and Nathaniel Lowe. And of course, it's impossible to overlook the impact that Bruce Bochy had as the manager. This is a team that could have quit at so many points during the season, between the injuries, bullpen meltdowns, and division collapse, but having an experienced and winning manager helped calm the tides and allow them to keep moving forward. It's often debated today how much impact managers truly have on a team, but Bochy's impact on the 2023 Texas Rangers is undeniable. This team won every single postseason road game, going 11-0 away from Arlington. There have been plenty of teams who have tried to spend big in order to accelerate rebuilds and to win a title, but it takes a combination of spending and smart trades and drafting to truly build a winner, and Chris Young and the Texas Rangers did just that. In the words of World Series MVP Corey Seager during the Rangers parade celebration, No, everybody was wondering what would happen if the Rangers didn't win the World Series. I guess we'll never know. Thank you all for watching this video. It took a ton of time to look through and dissect every aspect of the 2023 Texas Rangers, and I really appreciate you all taking the time to watch my hard work. To the Texas Rangers fans, I hope the long wait for a title was worth it, and I hope I did your championship run justice. I truly enjoyed watching this team defying all of their expectations and seeing their resilience to overcome each obstacle thrown at them throughout the year. 2011 was the first season that I truly followed baseball, and after watching the way that that series ended, combined with the failures in the following years, I am truly happy for the fans that now get to wipe away those awful memories and enjoy a World Series championship. Congratulations to the 2023 Texas Rangers, and here's to baseball in 2024.